everyone. Today we will discuss the chapter 11, the Western Women's Movement, Learning Outcomes. At the end of this chapter, the student should be able to first outline the development of Western feminism and second, explain the factor that shaped its development. The beginning of liberation, the origin of woman oppression seems from removed from our life realities. When speaking of woman history, the Western movement may come to my mind. Why? This moment exposes the structural inequality faced by women in particular eras. More importantly, this movement identifies women as an oppressed group. While this movement is distinct from the Philippine women's movement, it is nonetheless part of a longer story that shaped the global women's agenda today. The, per the prevalent perception among male and female students is that gender equality has been achieved and that fighting for gender rights is unnecessary. Some professors even feel that women no longer need gender-specific rights because women can already do what they want. Given the many one freedoms of women, many say that some feminists have become unnecessarily aggressive to sensitive on their claims. There is a societal imbalance in the power structures that dictate what men and women have access to. Based on both their biology and gender rules, this imbalance can be both limiting or liberating. The sexual situation near a woman's surgery shows that the power imbalance of gender rules is mostly limiting. Much of the students' understanding of gender just is influenced by social media posts and popular culture. Most of the social media websites, however, may have misconceptions about the true meaning of feminism and gender equality. While there are social justice warriors who write various issues including women, just women issues and social media platforms, their lack of knowledge in the history of women's movement and women's struggles make for a weak call to social change. Without knowing the historicity of an issue, one will not understand its root and cannot address it in a holistic manner. So what is feminism? Feminism is a collection of movements and ideologies aimed at defining, establishing, and defending equal political economics and social rights for women. This includes seeking to establish equal opportunities for women in education and employment. So, ang feminismo ay isang koneksyon ng kilusan at mga ideolohiya na naglalayong tukuyin ang pagpapatatag at pagtatanggol ng mga pantay na politikal na ekonomiya at mga karapatang panlipunan para sa mga kababaihan na katulad natin at kabilang na dito ang paghahanap ng pantay na pagkakataon para sa kababaihan, indikasyon at trabaho. Feminism is the belief that women should have equal right to men. In consequence, the feminist movement fights for equal rights and opportunities for women. In broad definition, it is women's movement in 1960s to struggle for the equality of rights as a social class. In literature, feminism is related to the ways and understanding literary works in both production and perception. So feminism it is dayro ga beliefs nga women should have equal rights to a man. The history of feminism. The history of modern Western feminist movement is divided into three waves. It is described as dealing with different aspects of the same feminist issue. The three waves are first wave, second wave, and third wave feminism. So I will discuss the first wave feminism. First wave feminism is a historical content women widely are considered to be intellectually inferior, physical weak, emotional attractive, irrational, set to the role of wives and mother women could not rule. They were not educated at school, universities, it could only work in manual job. A marriage woman property and salary were owned by their husband. Rape and physical abuse are legal within marriage. Divorce available to men that were more difficult to women. Women had no right to their children. If they left a marriage, abortion was legal. So, in the first wave feminism, dito mo makita yung mga rules, regulations, at activity na ginagawa ng mga women or ng mga kababaihan noon. 
na kung saan nagbago na ngayon, which is katulad na women had no right to their children if they left a marriage abortion was legal. So, ngayon, kapag ang mag-asawa ay naghiwalay, sa, sa babae na pupunta ang kanilang anak kasi sa lalaki. So, mer mas pabor yung mga kababaihan na kaya nilang palakihin yung kanilang mga anak kaysa sa, kaysa sa kanilang asawa na lalaki. So, ito yung mga, sabi ko nga, mga rules na, sin, na sinusunod ng mga kababihan or ginagawa nila noon. First New Feminism refers to a period of feminist activity during the 19th and early 20th century in the United Kingdom, Canada, and U.S. Kagaya nga ng sinabi ko, first wave is kung saan refers dito yung mga ginagawa or activity ng mga kababaihan noon. The key concern of a first wave feminist for education, employment, the marriage laws, and the plight of intelligent, middle-class single woman. Overall goal, to improve the legal position for women in particular, to gain women the vote. Basic assumption, men and women have separate biologically determined rules and duties in societies. So, magkaiba yung yung rules and duties ng kababaihan at kalalakihan noon sa ating lipunan. Women work in the private spheres, the home, men in the public spheres. So, ayun nga, women ang mga kababaihan ay sa loob ng bahay. Kung saan tagaluto, tagalinis ng bahay, at tagaalaga ng kanilang anak. Habang mga kalalakihan ay sa labas at nagtatrabaho. Active until the first war, First World War One. So the feminine, the first wave feminism is active pa rin siya hanggang First World War One. So the last na I did discuss ko is about the importance incidents. So first wave feminism. Russia in 1913, women observed the first international. Woman Day on the last Sunday in February. Following discussion, Woman Day was transferred to March 8, and this day has remained a global day for International Women's Day ever since. England in 1918, Marie Stoops, who believed in equality in marriage and the importance of women's sexual desire, published Married Love, a sex manual had, according to Survey of American Academics in 1935, was one of the 25 most influenced books of the previous 50 years. Germany in 1919 granted women the right to vote. So, sa Germany in 1919, dito na nila pinayagan na mag-vote ang mga kababayhan. England 1919 Nancy Astor became the first woman to take her seat in the House of Commons. China and the first male student were accepted in Peking University, soon followed by university all over China. Good day everyone. So the next wave that I will be going to discuss is about the second wave feminism. Okay, as we take a look at the historical background of the second wave feminism, I decided to state all the events that occurred during that era in a bullet form so that we can easily identify those events that happened way back in the second wave of feminism. So the first on the list are women could attend school and university. Women did not receive equal pay for the same work. It was easier to gain a divorce but socially frowned up. Rape and physical abuse within marriage were illegal, but husbands were rarely convicted. Abortion was still illegal. Women's body were objectified in advertising. So next is about the basic assumptions. Society is patriarchal. So what is patriarchal means? That means that men dominate the society and they are much more powerful than women. They are much capable of governing society. Women may have legal rights, but they are still treated as inferior. It means that women has limited rights because of the low view towards them. Women should be equal to men in all respects. 
The second wave of feminism, which occurred in 1960 to 1970, came as a response to the experiences of women after World War II. So, from 1960 to 1970, the second wave feminism occurred. It is because of the experiences of women on World War II. But, what happened to the women during World War II? During that war, women faced challenges in overcoming cultural stereotypes against working women. The women achieved championed abortion, rights, reproductive freedom, and other women's health issues. Okay, so now let's tackle about the important incidents. In 1966, 28 women, among them Betty Friedan, founded the National Organization for Women. 1969, the American Radical Organization Red Stockings organized. In 1973, the American National Black Feminist Organization was formed. 1977, the Canadian Human Rights Act was passed, prohibiting discrimination based on characteristics including sex and sexual orientation and requiring equal pay for work of equal value. On 1980, the second wave began in the 1980s in Turkey and in Israel. Women in the Western world eventually earned the right vote, while more and more gains she identified from women. This was still a large gap between women's and men's freedom. Despite women attaining the right to vote, they were still viewed as a second-class citizens. Okay, so here it means that the women has given the right to vote, but still they cannot execute the same right to men because here they are still considered or viewed as a second-class citizen. The second wave of feminism is more concerned with the idea of womanhood and the issues that came with the social construction of women's role, and therefore identity. Thus, a deeper understanding of womanhood, its implications, and the issues surrounding women emerge. It is more concerned with the idea of being women and the function of women in society, their role and quality. The second wave of feminism was rooted in the movements of liberation in the 1960s and 1970s and the heightened feminist consciousness. Feminimistic 1963 Betty Friedan's book that awoke numerous women across America. Books published between 1949 and the 1970s Mark the spirit and the ideology of the second wave of feminism. Simone de Beauvoir's The Second Sex, Kate Millett's The Sexual Politics, Shulamit Firestone's The Dialect of Sex. World War I and II also greatly influenced the second wave of feminist women. Examples are is the American propaganda, the Rosie, the Rivet. Next is Simone de Beauvoir. A French feminist best known for her work, The Second Sex, explored, explored how women were not seen as equal by men and that the very realization of women's existence as persons was structured to be inferior. Shulamith Firestone, in her text The Dialect of Sex, called for a feminist revolution that could help liberate women from inequality brought by their biology, specifically those concerning conception, childbirth, and, and childbearing. Kate Miller, in her text Sexual Politics, focuses on the politics as power structures and the relation of sex coitus and biological sex this, creating the fundamental link between gender socialization the patriarchal system, and the formation of women as oppressed. Next is theoretical roots in the second wave of feminism, socialist feminism. Social feminism was developed after the Marxist feminism to address gaps found in Marxist theories. Unlike Marxist feminists, socialist 
feminists believe that women are oppressed in all aspects of their lives, not only in the economic aspect. Next is theoretical roots in the second wave of feminism, radical feminism. The civil rights movement in the U.S. inspired another form of feminism and is grounded on structural change. This feminist perspective known as radical feminism sought to ensure that women's differences from men were recognized and celebrated. Radical feminism identifies one's biology as the root cause of the oppression of women which lies in the idea that one's ability and role could be reduced to his or her sex. So now I will discuss the third wave of feminism. The 1990s brought about the recognition of different oppressions women faced around the globe, the rise of communism and the new global order along with biomedical and technological advances shaped the issues of this era. Historical content, women seem to be more equal to men. Women are no longer obligated to marry or have children, and marriage is more equal. The legal system is better at protecting women's rights, so the third wave of feminism greatly focused on reproductive rights for women. Third wave feminism seeks to challenge or avoid what it seems the second wave essential definitions of femininity, which often assume a universal female identity and over emphasize the experiences of upper middle class white women. Third wave feminists such as L. Green often focus on micropolitics and challenge the second wave's paradigm as to what is or is not good for women. In the year 1994, the Gender Equity and Education Act became law in the United States. It banned sexual stereotyping and gender discriminations in the classroom. Also in the year 1994, the Violence Against Women Act became law in the United States. In the year 1995, the Fourth World Conference on Women was held in China. In year 2007, the Gender Equality Duty of the Equality Act in the year 2006 came into effect in the United Kingdom. And in the year 2008, Norway requires all companies to have at least 40% women on their board. The following are the types of feminism. The first one is the radical feminism, the second is the liberal feminism, and the third one is the socialist feminism. So what is radical feminism? It arose within the second wave in the 1960s. Radical feminism is a perspective within feminism that calls for a radical reordering of society in which male supremacy is eliminated in all social and economic contexts. Radical feminists helped to translate the radical protest for racial equality in which many had experienced over to the struggle for women's rights. They took up the cause and advocate for a variety of women's issues, including abortion rights, the Equality Rights Amendment, and the Equal Pay. So the next one is the liberal feminism, aims to achieve equal legal, political, and social rights for women. It wishes to bring women equality in all public institutions and to extend the creation of knowledge so that women's issues can no longer be ignored. Specific issues important to liberal feminists include but are not limited to reproductive rights and abortion access, sexual harassment, voting, education, fair compensation for work, affordable child care, health care, and bringing to light the frequency of sexual and domestic violence against women. So the last one is the Marxist or socialist feminism. Marxism recognizes that women are oppressed and attributes the oppression to the capitalist or private property system. Thus, they insist that the only way to end the oppression of women is to overthrow the capitalist system. Socialist feminism is the result of Marxism meeting radical feminism. Socialist feminism explores how patriarchal values determine the lived, affective relations of reproduction, production, and consumption to stabilize capitalism.